In the last video, we looked at the sum of a geometric series. In this video, we're going to work through some questions that involve geometric series. In question 14, we're asked to find the least value of n such that the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 25 over 8 plus 125 over 32 and so on and so forth exceeds 65. So let's remind ourselves now of the way in which we can write the sum of n terms. It can be written two different ways. We can have a, we can have 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, or we can write the sum of n terms as a, we can have r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. We looked at both of these in the last video, so if you haven't seen that, please do check it out. So let's identify a, r, s and n. Well a is the first term, we can see that that's going to be 2. We can find the ratio by dividing 5 over 2 by 2 or if we wanted 25 over 8 over 5 over 2. I think it's quite clearly uh, a lot easier to do 5 over 2 divided by 2. That's 5 over 4 as a fraction or we could write that as 1.25. Entirely up to you on how you want to work decimals or fractions. We want the sum to exceed 65, so s will be greater than 65, and n is given as n. So let's set this up. I think I'm going to use this one to avoid too many negatives in our working. If it's a straight plug it into a calculator, we've generally been using this one. Entirely up to you, I'm just going to pop it in this one. So 65, we need our sum to be greater. So setting up the inequality, we can have a, which is 2. Then we'll have the ratio, which is 1.25. To the power of n, we need to subtract 1 and divide this by the ratio, which is 1.25 minus 1, which is 0 0.25. So this is what we've got. We've got an inequality, and we need to solve for the unknown n. This is going to need logarithms. Let's just tidy it up first. 2 divided by a quarter is 8. 65 over 8 is going to give us 8.125. So 8.125, and that will be less than 1.25 to the power of n minus 1. Adding 1 to both sides, 9.125, and that now will be less than 1.25 to the power of n. At this stage, I need to take logs. You can take base 10 or you can take base 1.25. Entirely up to you. I'm going to take base 1.25. So we'll have now log to the base 1.25 of now our 9.125. And now n will be greater than this value. If you'd taken base 10, taking base 10 and using the power law, we could say now that log, and this is base 10, 9.125, and then we would have now log of 1.25, and n would be greater than that. So entirely up to, same answer we will get now. So it's asking me now the power of 1.25 is raised by to get 9.125. Quite clearly, no issues with negativity and requiring the uh, inequality sign to change. So let's do that. So base now 1.25, and then we're going to have 9.125. So 9.125, and that's going to give us 9.9085. So 9.9085 dot, 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 dot. So n has got to be greater than this. Therefore, now the least value of n, n will be 10. So all I've done is set this up, used our formula, and as stated, you could have used this one, um, and we found the least value of n. If you wanted to check that, we can go ahead and just plug in any point just to check that that is logical. So for example, now let's just set this up. A is 2, so 2, and then we've got 1.25 to the power. If we did it to the power 9, and then we subtracted 1, and divided this now by 0 0.25. This should give us now something less than 65, 51.6. And then, of course, if we now uh, put 10 in, 10, there we go, 66.5. So we need now n to be 10, so that it exceeds 65. Question 15. Fred starts a new job. 
He's paid £32,000 in his first year and each year he works for a company, he has paid 9% more than the previous year. In part A, we're asked to find out how much Fred is paid in the fifth year and in part B, find how much Fred earns in total by the end of the 12th year working for the company. With a question like this, we've got a couple of issues. One, we need to find the values of A, R, S and N, if we do, um, whichever ones you need to find. And also, we need to establish whether we're looking for a term such that we'll use A sub N is equal to A multiplied by R to the power of N minus 1, or we're looking for the sum. The sum of N terms, one particular approach is 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. So, if we look now at the key words, the key words are things like total. So, total suggests that it's going to be a sum. If we're given something along the lines of in the fifth year, so in the fifth year, this would just suggest a term. So, on the first one, we're looking for a term, so we would use a sub n is equal to a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1. And then the total, when we're adding it up, is the sum. So look for those keywords. So let's go ahead now and look at part a, and we will collect some information. a, r, s, and n. So this is the part a, and we want to find now the value of this. Um, so we're just looking for a term. So 32,000 is a. The ratio, he's paid 9% more. That, therefore, is 1.09. And now the value of N is the fifth year. This is the fifth term. So if you think first year, first term, second year, second term, third year, third term, fourth year, fourth term, fifth year, fifth term. So all we're looking for then is A sub 5. And we saw this in one of the first videos. That's going to be now 32,000 and we multiply this by 1.09 to the power of 5 minus 1 which is going to be 4. So this is what he's going to get paid now. So 32,000 times by 1.09 to the power of 4. So this is his salary or his wages in the fifth year. £45,170.61. So 45,000, what have we got? 170 pounds 61, 170. So 170, 61. Um, he's getting quite a nice little pay rise uh, each year. 9% each year is pretty good. Right, let's now move on to the second part. We need to find the sum. A, R, S, N. So if we look now at these values... We've got A, that doesn't change, 32,000, the ratio is 1.09, now we're looking by the end of the 12th year, so this is going to be 12. So we can say now the sum of the first 12 years, or the first 12 terms, we're going to have the first, which is going to be 32,000, we'll have now one. 0 in fact we'll do it this way around 1 minus we can do it as either way around it doesn't matter um, but seeing as I've written that one I think we'll change over from the last one as stated it, it's it entirely up to you. 1 minus 1.09 to the 12th over now 1 minus 1.09 so let's go ahead and look at this this should be quite a tidy little sum that he's earned so 32,000 there we go, 1 minus the 1.09 to the power of 12. Then we're going to divide this now by 1, so let's get in there, 1 minus 1.09. Um, there we go, that looks good. And that is going to give now £644,503. So £644,503. Um, and what are we going to have? Uh, what's that going to be in three pence? So 0 0.03. Now, often uh, you'll be asked to give this to the nearest pound or to the nearest 10p or to the nearest penny, whatever. 
again, no level of accuracy here. I'm just rounding them to um, an appropriate degree of accuracy. So this is a wordy question, not particularly hard. Um, it could be a lot worse, like a bank account where we're paying in um, a, a, an amount each year um, on top of what we've got and we need to work out certain things with that. So the wording of this one is quite nice. Um, but all we've done is gone ahead, plugged it into the, the formulae um, and gone ahead and found these values. So with a wordy question, find out what they want. Is it a term or is it a sum? Then get your A, R, S and N, fill them out. You need three pieces of information, as we saw in the last video, to find the fourth.